Assalamu alaikum presenting another of the electric mosques presentation of the teachings of Islam. Brought to you with the compliments of the electric mosques, Guyana. And the topic today is Palestine. Peace, not apartheid. Based by research and work done on it all by former President Jimmy Carter. We also have um, the chronology I started with there. The chronology went in back long before Christ. Maybe 2,000 years before Christ to give you a good idea as to what it is. So my advice is to share this, friends and family. Let us pray for peace with the Israelis and the Palestinians, understanding and harmony, because Israel is a de facto nation. Palestine is de facto, whilst they're trying to eliminate, destroy it, wipe it out for its waterfront, its gas and oil, and its valuable lands to make them into nothing. Your friend, your brother, and I go now to the presentation of the Electric Mosque. This is a guidance on Palestine. And I have quite a few to bring to you on Palestine, consequently Israel. I want to make it quite a point that for thousands of years, Palestine was Palestine. Prime Minister Golda Meir of what was established as Israel was a Palestinian. And she made it clear that she had a Palestinian passport. And unlike what Netanyahu tries to show, that there were people living in sackcloths, Palestine was a vibrant, developing society uh, with government, mayorship, municipal, and uh, a nationalistic government, and so on, but under the Ottoman Empire. Some Jews always lived there, as some Jews always lived in Iran, they still live there unrecognized. Some Jews are always in Egypt. Some Jews have always been in Iraq and protected in all these places and in Libya and all the Muslim countries. And Jews, as far as I'm concerned, are not an obnoxious people. They are good Jews and they are bad Jews. They are good Muslims and they are bad Muslims. They are good and bad everywhere we go. But generally, Jews are a compassionate people and do not misconstrue the Zionists, those whom Netanyahu has brought in and the other prime ministers and giving them the West Bank occupied lands to torment, desecrate and destroy the Palestinians and make it impossible and difficult with their apartheid whereby they have special highways and roads with special passes, difficult and expensive for the Palestinians to pass to get to the mosque. So the Palestinians cannot go to college or school. They cannot go to, they cannot get a passport. They cannot leave the country. They are in subjection and they are in concentration camps perpetually. I never thought, with all the love that I, Haji Dr. Roshan Khan, have had for the Jewish people, when I went to Europe, for a cruise, and I stopped in Germany, and so on. I wanted to see the places of where Jewish lives were in concentration camp, and they were desecrated, and they destroyed. And I went to the Jewish cemeteries, and I offered prayers for them. I never, in my wildest imagination, believed that they would have taken Hitler's hate and vengeance on the Palestinians. And when the time came, 
to create a peace and harmony of the, after they were stealing the land because of uh, world powers wanting there to be like a, a spy state, that is Israel, for these world powers. But really they don't do anything for the world powers. They just keep on drawing the tens of billions of dollars and they do really nothing other than manipulate the elections in the United States Congress and the United States government, destroy those who don't comply with them, call them anti-Semites, and totally wipe them out and destroy them. I don't have a problem with Jews. I don't have a problem with Yeshua, Jesus Christ. I don't have a problem with Christians. I don't have a problem with Hindus. I don't have a problem with anybody. I want peace, love, and goodwill for all. And eventually when the time came for peace, and goodwill and harmony to be created by Yasser Arafat, PLO, and uh, Yitzhak Rabin, the Prime Minister of, uh, uh, well, de facto Israel, and they came to an understanding. It is alleged that Netanyahu was pumping the emotions of the people and eventually uh, uh, a Jewish fanatic, and we have fanatics everywhere. Don't get me wrong, we have Muslim fanatics too, plenty of them. And one of them volunteered to murder Itzhak Rabin. Itzhak Rabin and the peace treaties and so on was not demolished by the Palestinian or PLO, but by a Jewish fanatic, and it is alleged, pushed by rhetoric and emotion by Netanyahu. So here today, one of the most eloquent uh, speakers and presenters on truth and goodwill of Palestine and Israel is President Jimmy Carter. My daughter-in-law, Arifa Khan, presented me this book she heard I wanted it, and God bless her, and so on. So there is a historical chrono chronology that I wish to give you, first of all, an in-time snippets. Developments in the Middle East can be understood if the history of the region is reviewed, according to President Jimmy Carter. Listed here are a few of the important events that has led it to the existing state of affairs. He's talking about this warfare, uh, this distrust, and this hate that exists. I, personally, I believe that peace can be right, reached. Both sides have to be cognizant of the fact that both sides have to lose a bit, and they will gain a bit. I must state also that I believe that uh, Arafat was poisoned by radioactive poisoning from Israel. I do believe that Shimon Peres, who was the war dog at one time, who formed the Kadima party and who was going to form a new, uh, in, who was forming a new form of engineered peace that he was also put to bed to rest for over 12 years or maybe more with the radioactive poisoning that he lose his consciousness. And so let me move on. So from 1900 BC, Abraham journeys from Ur to Canaan. 1200 BC, Moses led the Israelite exodus from Egypt. 1000 BC, King David unites the 12 tribes of Israel. Then his son Solomon builds the temple in Jerusalem. The Israelite nation divides into two weaker kingdoms, Israel and Judah. Israel is conquered by the Assyrians in 720 BC. And Judah is destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC. I mean, if you go to the biblical analogies and explanations, they were cursed for 
um, behavior and attitude and rebelling and always trying to kill the prophets. So they were cursed. They were cursed even by God himself to scatter the earth even since the time of Moses and Yeshua personally cursed them in the in, in, in the parable of the fig tree that's Jesus Christ we must remember Jesus Christ is an Englishman's name and his name was never Jesus Christ his name was Yeshua Five thirty-eight BC, Persia conquers Babylon and permits exiled Jews to return to Jerusalem. So they say Iran was bad, which is really Persia, conquers Babylon, that is in Iraq, that's Iraq, and permits exiled Jews to return to Jerusalem. So Persia allowed the Iranian then people to return to Jerusalem if they wish. 332 BC, Greeks conquer the region. 167 before Christ, Jews establish an independent Judea. 63 BC, Romans establish control over Judea. 4 BC, Jesus is born. That is Yeshua, his right name. Remember, Jesus Christ, real name, Yeshua, Never heard of Jesus Christ or of Christians or of Christianity. That was a later development which was done by um, Constantine, so called great emperor of the Roman Empire. The first Roman Empire was destroyed by Prophet Muhammad in a military conquest. The Romans were destroyed, wiped out. But there was this one in. Constantinople, bearing the name Constantine, which was later again destroyed by the Muslims. And then it became uh, the Ottoman Empire, which later became Turkey. I'm giving you some more knowledge. For BC, Jesus is born, he, he is crucified 33 years later. After a ministry of three years, Christian churches are established throughout the Eastern Roman Empire. How do you like that? Eastern Roman Empire established Christian churches all over the place after they had put Jesus Christ on the cross. AD 70, after Jesus, a Jewish revolt against Rome is put down and the temple is destroyed. 135 AD. In, in the year of the Lord, Anno Domini. Romans suppressed a Jewish revolt, killing or forcing almost all Jews of Judea into exile. The Romans named the province Syria Palestina. So, killing or forcing all of the Jews of Judea into exile. The Roman Emperor Constantine, a Christian, strengthens his own religion throughout the region he it will be noteworthy to, in the holy bible he chose the four canonical gospels constantine and you have these four names mark matthew john luke but you have no surname to them but in the bible as you read they always describe son of who son of who son of who of where of where of son of but here you have mark matthew john and luke son of who not mentioned. Uh, who chose those four books? It was Constantine. When he called all the churches together in Nicaea to have a discussion on the way forward with their quarrels and the fact remains that these four books were suddenly chosen in a room where all the 200 books were placed and many books were taken out. So who put them there first of all? Who gave him permission to remove what is called the Apocrypha? Who decided it's an Apocrypha or unauthorized? And who the, and he alone had the key. And when they went in, they found very neatly packed these four canonical gospels. They don't know where it came from. Some uh, decades after Christ, some, it is alleged, hundreds of years after 
Christ, or the real name is Yeshua. Remember, he did not know the Hebrew language. He did not speak Yiddish. He spoke Ar Aramaic, or Aramic, Aramaic, which is very close to Ar Arabic. And the word in Aramaic for God is Allah. Italy. So when he was saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, he was saying, Allah. And when he was on the cross and he was, um, with the, for the three to four hours that he was on the cross, when it takes um, days, sometimes as long as a week to die on the cross, and sometimes it's usually by birds picking your head. He was only there for three to four hours. And um, he cried out, Allah, Allah Sabastani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was expecting intercession and assistance and he got it. But that's another topic which I gave before, I will give again next time. Yeshua was a great world uh, teacher and prophet, but he came to the Jewish people to soften the hardness and the difficulties and to teach them that certain things could be done on the Sabbath. Let me go on. So the Roman 325 Emperor Constantine, a Christian, strengthens his own religion throughout the region. So he forced people to accept Christianity because he, he showed them the cross. You know, he showed them the cross. Sorry, he showed them the, excuse me, he showed them the sword. And you know, the sword comes like this and it has something like that. So this is what we will use as the emblem, the sword. And people took that as the cross. I remember the, the cross was the worst form of torture and death and a curse according to the Bible. That's why sometimes I see people wearing a big fat cross, I, I shiver because it's a form of assassination and mass murder with the worst of pains. It is, some people think it's a holy thing. It is really not a holy thing. Your mind makes it holy. Let me move on. Five seventy. The Prophet Muhammad is born, peace and blessings of God be upon him, in Mecca, establishes the Islamic faith, unites the Arabian Peninsula, and dies in six thirty two. Arabic rule and faith spread rapidly throughout Syria, Palestine, Persia, and Egypt. The first crusaders captured Jerusalem and established Christian rule over Palestine. Now they murdered Christians. The Crusaders, which came through the Pope and also King Arthur and the, of, of England, and they murdered Christians and Jews and Muslims. They massacred them. That the place was, the, some say knee deep and some say ankle deep, flowing in blood. Men, women, and children, their stomach bust open and babies taken take out of by the Crusaders. But they managed to capture Jerusalem and then it is believed that they went in into the, the temple and they went down deep and they managed to find the huge treasures. Now, coming down now, Saladin, Sultan of Egypt, is the famous Saladin, conquers Jerusalem and except for a 15 year interval, Muslims controlled Palestine until the end of World War I. So when I say Palestine, it means the whole peninsula, the entire thing there. He conquers Jerusalem and except for that 15 years interval in which the first crusaders went in, until the end of World War I, when the Ottoman Empire linked themselves with Hitler. And maybe Hitler had made certain promises to them if he wins and captures the world. Um, Muslims have historically been friendly to the Jews. 
because we, they all came from the line of prophet Abraham, who was neither an Arab, a Jew, nor a Christian. Not a Muslim, a Jew, nor a Christian, but he was a man of God. And so, they were always very close. They always do commerce. They always support each other. And then there were also some fanaticals of both sides who would try to make uh, troubles with each other. Now it might be a prudent thing to understand how come the Muslims took Jerusalem in the first place. They will never talk about Israel, you know, it's always Jerusalem. While after the Prophet had passed, Hazrat Omar, one of the caliphs after Prophet Muhammad, was heading out with his servant or slave to Jerusalem to have a discussion to prevent a state of warfare. And so traveled a very long distance and when he came to the closer he gave the horse to his servant or slave and like that he would always interchange each other with the servant or the slave whatever it may be. And when it came time to reach the gates of Jerusalem, he, the king of uh, the Muslims, Hazrat Umar, was walking and the servant was on the horse. So when they went in, they opened up the gates, they were two alone, and the bishops and the lords of Christianity and of the ancient Jews, everyone were in a state of shock. Because there was some secret prophecy that they knew about when a righteous king would come walking and his servant will be riding the horse. So I want to give you that. And this is where, even on one occasion, he was invited while he was there, to go and pray in their holy temple. And he refused. He decided to go pray on a rock. And when he was asked why, he said that it is possible when his people come in big quantities later on, they will want to take that, that temple because their king and to say, so to say, Lord, but the Muslims never liked the word Lord. They would like to say servant of Allah. But in their head, their Lord, their king, their chieftain was there and they might want to take the place over. So he went not too far away and prayed on a rock. And that is where the dome of the rock was built. And this is where Netanyahu and even Ariel Sharon and all the war dogs want to overrun the Dome of the Rock, that holy place where Prophet Muhammad went off with the, with the Borak, the craft of light. Some people like to see a horse, a winged horse. It was a small craft that had something like a wing and was Borak, the light, the craft of light that took him up into the heavens, first into hell, then into heaven to commune with God. And what I thought it wise to give you this bit of message, my friends. Let me go on now. So Saladin, Sultan of Egypt, conquers Jerusalem, and except for the 15 year interval, Muslims controlled Palestine until the end of World War I. 
So all the way from 1187, right through prior to that, was the Muslims ruling. And then the, the Crusaders have come from Europe with the most cruel form of mass murder. 1516, the Ottoman Turks take Syria, Palestine, and then Egypt. The French establish Lebanon as an autonomous district within Syria under Christian leadership. British forces occupy Egypt and remain there until 1955. So let me, let me go back chronological. 1516, Ottoman Turks take Syria, Palestine, and then Egypt. 1861, the French establish Lebanon as an autonomous district within Syria under Christian leadership. 1882, British forces occupy Egypt and remain there until 1955. Great Britain, during World War I, issues the Balfour Declaration. Balfour was a Jew. He was a prime minister. Um, and he declared and cause all this madness and mess that's taken place, he's the man who is responsible. He declared a Balfour Declaration promising a Jewish national home in Palestine with respect for the rights of non-Jewish Palestinians. So he established respect for the rights, but we know what happened after that. Remember also, they had after, uh, offered the Jews coming out of of uh, Germany, by the hundreds of thousands, a piece of Ghana. Then they were offering them a piece of Guyana, British Guyana, and they had refused. Remember, they had some very powerful, wealthy Jews, the Rothschild and others, who said they actually bought out Palestine, in a way, so their people could get there. So this was all part of that huge conspiracy and it is believed that they manipulated Hitler and did things so that Hitler would do the things he had to do including to massacre those millions of people so they could these Jewish people could get a homeland so it is said and so it is believed by some people you must remember that when those Jews went to the United States on these big ships, all in skin on bone, they were refused. The United States, that same United States, our United States that we love, refused them. Why they didn't give them a state? Why they didn't give them Berlin, take over half of Germany? Why, or some parts there, why they didn't give a part of Europe, one of those states, Czechoslovakia or Poland? Because these, most of these guys were Zionists. They were not true Jews. They were converts. That is why the cruelty of the Zionists, many of them, they, they came also from South Africa. And having come from South Africa, they, they loved the apartheid system. They loved to massacre the then African people. And that is why Mandela and the South Africans are saying, until pa Palestine is liberated, the South Africans are not truly liberated. And so, my friends, so the Christians established Lebanon, 1861. They also had gone, I must, you know, sometimes it's, they also had gone to Canada. And Trudeau, who was supplying arms and all kinds of things to uh, the Zionists of Israel to murder the Palestinians Canada refused and chased them out into the sea England refused them and chased them out in the sea except for whoever was there in previous times 1882 British forces occupy Egypt and remain there until 1955 1917, Great Britain during World War I issues the Balfour Declaration promising a national home in Palestine in respect for the rights of non-Jewish Palestinians. So what are, what are they doing to the Palestinians? They keep on killing them. They had the Nakba in 1948 in which people were pulled out of their homes and they were 
mass murdered, shot with machine guns, taken over their homes, and then hundreds of thousands were expelled. So that's so more so far for the British and the Balfour Declaration. 1922, after the Ottoman Empire is defeated in World War I, remember they, they, they joined forces with Hitler. A huge mistake. A totally huge mistake. The League of Nations, which is the, like the, the precursor or the forerunner to the United Nations, the League of Nations cons confirms British mandate over Iraq and Palestine. So this League of Nations gave the British rights over Iraq and Palestine and a French mandate over Syria and Lebanon. That's because they lost the war. Like when, when, when Germany lost the war, it was divided up between uh, Russia and the United States. Transjordan is separated from the Palestine Mandate and becomes an autonomous kingdom. That's the kingdom of Jordan. Palestinian Arabs demands a halt to Jewish immigration and a ban on land sales to the Jews. British troops attempt to assert control, but violence continues. You must remember now the British were under guerrilla attack from the Jewish people who came from, or the Zionists who came from Germany were hot now for land and power. They were hot uh, because of all what they went through. The Peel Commission recommends partition of Palestine between Arab and the Jews. Britain announces severe restrictions on Jewish immigration and land purchases in Palestine. Violence erupts from Jewish militants. Britain lets the United Nations decide what to do about Palestine, which is partitioned into Jewish, Arab, and international areas. Jerusalem and Bethlehem, 55% of the territory is allocated to the Jewish state. Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan are now independent states. The British mandate over Palestine terminates. Israel declared their independence as a nation. Arab art, uh, armies attack in 1948. Let me go back a little bit. 1939, Britain announces severe restrictions on Jewish immigration and land purchases in Palestine. Violence erupts from Jewish militants. 1947, Britain lets the United Nations decide what to do about Palestine, which is partitioned into Jewish, Arab, and international areas. Jerusalem and Bethlehem became international areas. 55% of the territory is allocated to the Jewish state. Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan are now independent states. Now, the Nakba I was telling you in 1948, um, I'm going to give you Nakba, which means a time of pain, war, and tears. The British mandate over, over, British mandate over Palestine terminates. Israel declared their independence as a nation. Arabs, Arab armies attack, and Israel prevails. UN General Assembly Resolution 194 establishing a conciliation commission and asserts that refugees wishing to return to their homes and live in peace should be allowed to do so. That compensation should be paid to others and that free access to holy places should be assured. But this is a United Nations law. Resolution 194, but the Jews or some, many of them and also mostly the violent Zionists will not allow it. But they had a right to return home, and those who didn't want to return home, the Jewish state was supposed to compensate them. 1949, our mystic agreements with the Arabs allow Israel to gain more land. 77% of Palestine, Egypt occupies the Gaza Strip, Transjordan remains Jordan, controls what is left of the West Bank of the Jordan River, including Old Jerusalem. And 1950. And in 1950, annexes the territory. That is, Jordan annexes part of Old Jerusalem. Egypt nationalizes the Suez Canal. And Israel, that is 1956, Israel nationalized the Suez Canal. And Israel joined Britain and France in occupying the canal area. Under an international pressure, all foreign forces withdrew from Egyptian territories by the next year. UN forces are assigned to patrol strategic areas of the Sinai. 
1964, the Palestine Liberation Organization established, committed to wage battle to liberate the homeland of the Palestinian people. 1967, Egypt blockades the Straits of Te Tehran and the Arab forces make menacing moves. Israel launches preemptive attacks on Egypt, Syria, Iraq, and then Jordan. And within six days, occupies the Golan Heights, Gaza, the Sinai, and the West Bank, including Jerusalem. And remember, they were being financed by Europe, particularly England and the United States, and given all the weapons, and so on. Six months later, 1967, UN Security Council Resolution 242 is passed, confirming the inadmissibility of acquisition of land by force and calling for Israel withdrawal from occupied territories, the right of all states in the region to live in peace within secure recognized borders and a just solution to the refugee problem. 1973, Egypt and Syria attack Israeli forces in the Sinai and Golan Heights. The conflict becomes known as the Yom Kippur War. After 16 days of war, a United Nations resolution 338 is passed, confirming resolution 242 and calling for international peace talks. Various disengagement agreements follow. 1974, the Arab summit at Rabat in Morocco unanimously proc proclaims the PLO as the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. Israel agrees to withdraw from Syrian territory except for control of the Golden Heights. Civil War 1975, civil war erupts in Lebanon with approval from the international community the following year. Syria sent troops to establish order. 1977, Egyptian President Anwar al-Sadr visits Jerusalem and outlines Arab demands to the Israeli Knesset. Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin makes a return visit to Ishmaelia with no progress toward peace. The Camp David of Accords 1978 are approved by Israel and Egypt, confirming Israel compliance with UN Resolution 242. Withdrawal of political and military forces from the West Bank and Gaza and full autonomy for the Palestinians. The Accord outlined a peace agreement between Israel and Egypt and other Arab neighbors. The Accords are rejected by the Arabs and the Baghdad summit, and Egypt is isolated. 1979, that's when I started my business. A peace treaty is signed between Israel and Egypt, guaranteeing withdrawal of Israel from the Sinai. Normal relation, diplomatic relations, and Israel access to the Suez Canal. Israel is 1981 esca escalates establishment of settlements in the Palestinian territory. Egyptian President Anwar al Sadat is assassinated. In response to terrorist 1982, in response to terrorist attacks across Lebanon's border, Israeli troops move into Lebanon, seeking to destroy PLO forces there. The militant Lebanese organization known as Hezbollah is established. Subsequent actions by the Israel in, in Lebanon drew international criticism. That was led as my memory serves me right by Shimon Perez, and there was some, some heavy mass murder of men, women, and children. 1987, the Palestinian Intifada uprising erupts. The Israeli response to the violence with harsh reprisals. The militant Palestinian organization known as Hamas is now established. Well, they're being forced. They're being forced. And I do believe every nation has a right to fight for liberation and freedom as per the United Nations Charter. 19, so, but Hamas, in any special peace agreement, needs to be told to stand down and to move aside. And I move on. 1988, Jordan cedes its right to the, in the West Bank and East Jerusalem to the PLO. Head Yasser Arafat acknowledges Israel's right to exist and renounces violence. The US and PLO initiate dialogue because Yasser Arafat renounces violence. The Persian Gulf War rejects Iraqi the Persian Gulf War ejects Iraqi forces that have invaded Kuwait and Muslim, many Palestinian exile moves to Jordan. 
a Middle East peace conference focusing on Arab-Israeli relations is convened in Madrid. 1993, the Israel and the PLO conclude a peace agreement in Oslo with mutual recognition and a five-year plan to resolve all remaining differences. Militant Palestinians and right-wing Israelis begin attempts to, to undermine the agreement. So some militant or violent Palestinians and some right-wing, which are violent Israelis, in each section try to derail that beautiful agreement. 1994, Palestinian National Assembly is established. Israel and Jordan sign a comprehensive peace agreement. 1995, Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, that's the angel of peace, partner of Yasser Arafat, is assassinated by an Israeli right-wing religious fanatic. The setback to the peace process is exacerbated by violent attacks from Palestinian groups opposed to the Oslo Agreement. Same thing from the Jewish side. There are always some people of evil. And it is alleged that Netanyahu is one of the powerhouses in that hate. 1996, Palestinians re-elect Yasser Arafat as president and elect the members of a legislative council Israelis return the Likud party to power, which stalls the Oslo process. The Y River Memorandum is issued after talks between the Israelis and Palestinians. Under U.S. auspices, an airport is opened in Gaza with flights to Arab nations. Israeli forces are withdrawn from Lebanon. Um, that is 1996 that Yasser Arafat was elected. 1998, the Y River Memorandum is issued with talks between Israelis and Palestinians under U.S. auspices, an airport in Gaza with flights to Arab nations. Israeli forces are withdrawn from Lebanon in 2000, except for the disputed area, Sheba Farms. Peace negotiations at Camp David breaks down. Ariel Sharon visits the Temple Mount, and a second intifada is launched, more violent than the first. So the Temple Mount, that is the one where the mosque was built, that the Hazrat Omar had prayed and the Muslim built this famous Temple Mount. Ariel Sharon, they were now claiming that, oh, it was something holy to the Jews, which is not true. Ariel Sharon went into the mosque with his shoes and tried to create a state of war and battle. So the second intifada, which was, what is the intifada? Un un unrest. Um, they were pelting bricks because that's all they had and their bodies. But the, the Jews had their weapons and their guns and they were shooting to death and breaking their hands. Ariel Sharon is like, like the Prime Minister of Israel in 2001, committed to rejection of the Oslo Peace Agreement and attempt a national security in the Gaza airport runaway is bulldozed. Ariel Sharon was responsible for that. 2002, an Arab League summit endorses Saudi peace plan based on UN Resolution 242 and 338. Suicide bombings provoke strong Israeli response. Sharon blames Arafat for the violence and confines him in his Ramallah office. Israel begins building a separation barrier within the West Bank because this is all they could have done. Um, people who don't have the weapons, the power, all they would give now is their body in suicide bombings. 2003, the Quartet Group, the United States, United Nations, Europe, and Russia agree on a roadmap for peace. Palestinians pledge full support, but Israel rejects key points. Violence continues, and the country security barrier in the West Bank draws international criticism for undermining the peace process. An unofficial peace agreement negotiated by Israel and Palestinian is released with extensive international support as the Geneva Initiative. 2004, Yasser Arafat dies under suspicious circumstances, believe he was poisoned with radioactive material from Israel. 2005, Mahmoud Abbas, Abu Mazen, is elected president of the Palestinian Authority. Israel unilaterally evacuates the settlements from the Gaza Strip and four from the West Bank. January 2006, Ariel Sharon suffers a massive stroke. I believe he was poisoned. 
with radioactive uh, material by some top people who wanted the power ever since. Palestinians elected new government with Hamas within a small plurality of votes, but a majority of parliamentary seats, Israel and the United States isolate Palestine cutting off funds. Now, now this is where I had a problem ever since. If Hamas won a democratic election, why you would cause the people to suffer and cause the Hamas to win more support? Why not, even through a third party, sit down and talk? You won through a democratic election. And you can't blame the people if democratically voted for a party you don't like. You have to sit down and talk and see how we could make peace, not make the people suffer. That's my take. I cannot dictate for the American government, but America is my country also, and I love it. And I will stand for it for many things. I'll fight many wars if I have to, even at this old age. March, August 2006, Ehud, Ehud Olmert becomes Prime Minister, promising that the divided wall will, in effect, be the new Israel-West Bank border. Remember, they went in 12 miles in and then built that wall. So they stole a big piece of the Palestinian lands with all their famous olive trees. Hamas and Hezbollah militants capture Israeli soldiers and Israeli forces attack Gaza and Lebanon. Hezbollah missiles strike northern Israel. That's March, 2000, March to August 2006. The United Nations approves Revolution 1701, establishing a fragile ceasefire. So as friends and family, um, I think that's a pretty good presentation for an electric mosque presentation of the teachings of Islam. Um, so think on all of that, friends and families, ladies and gentlemen. Breathe on it. Think on it. And let us see the way forward. For peace. I'm a man of peace. I want peace. I only want love and harmony for all people. You have fanatics in the Palestinian side, and we have fanatics on the Jewish-Israeli side. Fact is, Israel is a de facto nation now. It exists by force and by fraud. And it serves the purpose of certain countries and nations of power. It is there. We have to accept it. Remember, Arafat accepted it. The Palestinian Authority accepted it. So the best way now is to accept Palestine and let the Palestinians live their life. Your friend, your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Roshan, Electric Mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam. Thank you. Farewell. Ya man huwa Allahu allazi la ilaha illa huwa ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Maliku al-Quddus as-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaybin al-Aziz al-Jabbar al-Mutakabbir al-Khaliq al